Well, here we are again with another book overview. This book was originally uh, printed in 1992, and uh, I didn't get mine till about 1998, maybe 1997, somewhere around there before uh, Saving Private Ryan came out. And uh, this, let me show you the cover. It's in black and it's gold. It says World War, the World War II GI in color photograph, Windrow and Hawkins. All right, so just in case you stumble onto this book on a website somewhere and they don't have the cover for it, um, the publisher is M. What is it? MI five? No. Uh, anyway, this is the title of the book. Take a good look at it. All right, let's see who the publisher is. Uh, oh, Motor Motor Books International. I don't know if this book is still available. It was uh, originally forty dollars. I can't find it on the internet, to be honest with you. So this sucker might not be available anymore. So if you still, like I said, if you stumble onto one of these on eBay, it's again a book that I do recommend. It's a very nice book for those of you who are starting some reenacting. It shows you a little bit of everything, um, just to get your feet wet. But it's really nice because, as you can see, it's a pretty nice big book. Right? This is my 14-inch laptop or 15-inch laptop, and it's pretty big, pretty nice and big. Great pictures in it. So let's go ahead and see what's inside of it and uh, tease you a little bit so that if you do stumble onto it, you'll say, hey, I kind of like that book and uh, review. Um, here is pre-war, early war, stuff like this. I remember uh, way back in those days when I would be able to, we'd be able to find this stuff super duper cheap everywhere, everywhere. Incredibly cheap. 20 bucks for an actual World War II cartridge, you know, pouch or belt. It's like, man, can't find that anymore, really. It's a little more difficult. At least you know, you, the prices aren't extremely terrible, but it's just a little bit harder to find. Especially now with all the repos that are out there. There's some nice pictures of service uniforms. You know. I used to be able to, used to be able to find World War Two uh, shirts, like left and right, super duper easy. You still had to be a little bit thin, of course, but uh, large would be forty. A large, large, a fat guy would be forty. The average was about 30, 37, 38 for the shirts, about thirty six for the sh for the pants, for the trousers. Uh, sometimes thirty four, thirty two, but uh, thirty six was like considered a little bit. Uh, uh, you need to do a few laps around the field there, buddy. Put down the donuts. So, in any case, um, this just shows you some clothing that they would have back in the day. Talks, of course, a little bit about um, what they're showing you. Summer tropical wear. I remember that. We had that, and that was cool. We did a parade with about 20, 30 guys. With you all uniformed up, and that it was pretty cool. That was one of the fun days. Way, way back in the last century almost. Anyway, uh, I had, I've had i had two of these field phones. And uh, these are the canvas ones. The other ones were leather. Talks a little bit about the communication system. And, you know, I used to... Uh, I came out in a uh, couple of uh, mail call videos. Uh, as you know, because they would call us since we we're down here in Southern California, they would call us 29th Infantry to do some help them out. Uh, definitely nice view of the insides and the thicknesses of the different liners. Um, and my favorite uh, line in uh, mail call would be like, You're watching the show, mail call, hey, hey, that's my foot, that's my foot, that's my foot, hey, mom, that's my foot. I know that's my foot because I was there. Yeah, that's my my fame, my my greatest, you know, contribution to the to theater. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> showing you the different boots that are out there. Okay, talks about them. Combat in the Pacific. Talks a little bit about that as well. Overall, but yeah, those are overall. Yeah. Um, Tommy with a, a drum. Just shows you the different stuff that's out there. This is uh, more khaki. Be what the heck? Herringbone 
my goodness, I used to have this stuff. I forget what it's called. Operation Torch when they landed in, in Africa. Right? They landed in Africa, right? Yeah, in North Africa. French North Africa. So, they were wearing a, the herringbone pattern. HBTs. Yeah, I think they're, I call them HBTs. But uh, they talk about that and the equipment that there is in there. And some of the mountain troops as well. The shoes. You know, you never know when you stumble onto some of this stuff on eBay. Because if people are not interested in it, it's not going to sell. Um, and people don't know what they what they have, it's not going to sell. right? So if you know what you're looking for, a book like this is a really neat help. It'll give you that edge. Rucksack. I, used to, I still see these rucksacks. And I'm like, are those 1940s or 1950s? I forget. Anyway. I forget. The Johnson. He's got a Johnson. Right? That's a Johnson, right? Yeah, it's a Johnson. If you got about $3,000, you can get one of those. Sweet. Maybe not. Anyway. I pack water water cooled gas mask it talks about all that kind of stuff ah d-day everybody wants to do d-day right everybody wants to do d-day now we did a d-day shoot one time for this one guy in college and we were down in cambrio beach and we literally freaking did this okay i did not have a cover because not everybody did some of the guys did i did not and those of us who got our rifles submerged in water, salt water, oh lord, when I took it back home, I stripped my M1 to the bone. And I dried it and oiled it, scrubbed it, everything. And a few months later, some of the guys who did not scrub their M1s, just from that one time of being on the beach, they were rusting out. I mean, horribly. And I couldn't believe why the hell they didn't do that. But in any case, we got to do this too on the, on the, down here in Southern California. That was fun. So it talks about the arm, you know, the armband, the gas brassard, as they called it. It talks about what kind of equipment they would be wearing at the time. Oh, there's another battle jerkin, another one. The one that Tom Hanks was wearing in Saving Private Ryan. Oh, I've had this one before, the flotation device here. I've had that one, sold it. Second Rangers going up Point to Hawk with uh, their battle jacket, whatever the heck it's called. I forget some of these names, sorry about that. But in any case, uh, some of this Marine, is it? Did the Marines have that too? GIs were in, I mean, anyway. I, see, I, would, I always forgot because I thought only the Marines had this kind of stuff. But uh, the gas mask bags, you know, those are. Those had always been incredibly difficult to find. And with the mask, even worse. I ended up making my own. But in any case, here you go. Here's some really great pictures. You should blow up this video if you're watching it. Um, like I do, I hook up my my laptop to my TV just by some couple cables. So I'm like, I got my 60 inch TV watching there and I'm watching videos and pictures and stuff. And just more equipment that they would be wearing. Grenade launcher. Right? Pretty cool. Saw those. A friend of mine got a grenade launcher for like 50 bucks one time. That was a long time ago though. Because the guy selling it didn't know what he had. That was a long, long time ago. Galaxy Far, Far Away. I've had a couple of these. And some guys actually gutted them and put in a little bit of... Uh, simple radio con connection that way you could actually use it but it didn't have all the actual stuff from the day and uh, it would weigh a lot less because the batteries two batteries are right here and it's insanely heavy but uh, anyway people did that for reenacting and this is we're getting into colder weather it looks like with the gloves the gloves sucked I didn't like them I could not I couldn't use them. I uh, just, I don't know. Little stumpy fingers that I've got here. Never play the piano. So it just shows you a little bit of the winter clothing. 
winter weather, Mackinac coats, and into Germany. Tanks. I know we did one battle way up in the middle of California where we literally had the Tiger tanks that they used in St. Vincent Ryan in the battle. That was pretty neat. That was pretty cool. So here's a flotation device. Not sure why the hell he's blowing that one up. And he's got the bazooka. It's like the second model or something because it's a bigger, heavier, heavier model, I believe. Support. Ah, see, it's bigger than this one. Support weapons. See, that's a bigger, more fancy pants bazooka. Wow, 50, 50 cal. Mortar. The handy talkie. That's not a walkie talkie. That is a handy talkie. The big backpack radio was the walkie talkie. Minesweepers. I had a friend who had a minesweeper kit. Pretty neat. And airborne. Everybody wants to do airborne. That was pretty neat. I had one of those. I had one of these. Not everybody did that. And I think that was more of a market garden, not D-Day, as far as I know. The May West, uh, you know, those the May West, or a particular type that they use, not all. There, were, there are several types that you see on eBay all the time, but there was a particular type that they used back in that day, anyway. Haversack, flips over your back. Once you get rid of your backpack, you know, that flips over. It's like Conan O'Brien, what the hell is he doing there? The rifle pack, which did not do that good. Got rid of that one pretty fast. Mills, what is it? No, the Hawkins mine right here, the Hawkins mine. Talked about that, I think. And now we're in Market Garden, where they now have a different uniform. The M43, I think, is what they have now. Yeah. And the Handy Talkie, again. The Handy Talkie, not the Walkie Talkie. And the Thompson. And Bazooka again. And some Tank. Tankers, for those of you who like that stuff. Coveralls or overalls. And let me see. I think that's going to be it, pretty much. Yeah, that's going to be it. So, in any case, um, I think this is a good book for those of you that are getting into the reenacting world. Um, I know if you like pictures like that. Um, collectors as well. This is a nice book. And uh, like I said, it started off in 40 bucks back in even 1999 when I think I got this one, 1998. But if you stumble onto one of these and you on on eBay or something and you're like, hmm, do I want to spend the money on this book? It's now $60 or it's now $50. Well, hopefully you'll find my video and uh, you'll get a, a nice view of the pictures in it and you can decide from my video um, whether or not you want to buy this book. So... I do recommend it. I think it's a really great book. I'm glad I bought it many, many years. Oh my God, over 20 years ago. And uh, so I'll be making more videos about books like this that I'm gonna be doing an overview of. I'm not reviewing because I'm not a critic. I'm just a reenactor, collector, history buff like you. So thanks again for watching my video and we'll see you on the next book.